right, we're live. I'm just wait for a couple of people to hop on. It's so funny. It's so funny how you've got a bun on top of your head. It's, and it it's been like that. I know, I know. It's been like that. That's my hairstylist. I just want to yeah. wash it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I didn't I wasn't like you said, I wasn't jumping in the shower. <laughs> I mean <laughs> by like day three, I was like, I probably need to go take a shower. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. After a couple of days. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I'm just trying to see if, um, M Manira, can you see if you can send us a message on comments and see if it comes up? Oh, yes. Got it. Yes. Yes. Someone's on. Steven's on. Awesome. So we can see messages. Yay. I, I don't. Hey, Steph. Okay. Is there any way I'm able to see them? Um, can you, um, can you do, you have a comment section, like a bar, mm -hmm. so hit comments and then your comments will show up. I got it. Awesome. Oh, Hey guys. Awesome. This is really, really good. We're going to wait for a couple more people to get on and then we're going to get started. Wow. So I did, did you count your day? So how, so this is day what for you? Say, um, um, since I've been home? No, yeah, just the, since your diagnosis. Oh, I was diagnosed from the 26th of last month. So it's, um, I mean. Not quite a month. Yeah, right yeah. at a month. Yeah, right at a month. Getting close, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Stephanie, I can see you. Hey, Susan. Um, yeah, it's been, so for me. Yeah, it just feels like forever. Like it, just, <laughs> it feels like it's looking forever. Um, yeah, it feels like forever. Well, we've got 25 people watching, Angelique. Let's get started. So, okay. so first of all, everyone, um, thank you for hopping on with me, Angelique. We're gonna make you laugh for a moment. Like we didn't plan the hairstyle, like the bun and the glasses. Like <laughs> this is um we're just COVID ready, right, Angelique? Like this is what happens when you don't comb your hair properly and you just can't because your eyes are hurting too bad. And when you get to stay at home because, you know, you can't really do anything else. Gosh, Jess. So we're talking about we're going to give you all the good stuff today. Um, we were talking about showers and how I think I got to like day four and I was like, OK, I think it's time for a shower now. Now. <laughs> Definitely. And then, of course, you're, you're still in quarantine. And even during that 14 day number that they randomly came up with, <laughs> when you when you get that that 14 days, you miss several showers, I think. I think you're frozen, Tish. I, I can't hear you. Hello. I think you're frozen on my end, Tish. I'm sorry if you're talking. She might have dropped. Hello, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I think Tish is frozen. Thank you guys so much for jumping on. I'm sure she'll pop back in in just a second. Hopefully y'all's families are doing well and staying safe and you're being healthy. Things are changing fluidly daily for everybody. She'll be popping back on in just a second, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you guys for jumping on. Hey, Stephen, how are you? <laughs> hey, John. <laughs> hey, John. <laughs> 
I'm going to text Tish and see if she's popping back on. This was kind of last minute for, for me too. She sent me the information and asked me to jump on with her. Hello, hello, everybody. So hopefully she's jumping back on. And you guys are staying safe during this COVID pandemic. Hopefully you and your family are doing well. I think that Tish just really wanted to kind of um, encap encapsulate our situation and circumstance and just answer any questions that people, um, you know, may have, may have about um, COVID-19 uh, and the experience of, you know, coming down with it and what to do with your family and how that impacts your family. So I think she wants to talk a little bit about that. And she texted me and asked me yesterday if um, I would jump on um, Facebook with her. So hopefully she gets to come back on in just a second. We'll give her just a minute and see if, um, thank you so much for asking CC. The family is doing better. Um, my daughter just really got her letter, I think, officially um, day before yesterday to say that she was um, negative. So that's been a blessing, but that's also been a very long road for her because she had um, multiple positives. So um, we had to deal with that um, and try to get her clear. Hey, John Preston. <laughs> Yes, Rhonda, I did actually have COVID um, and uh, so did my daughter. So multiple family members got it. My husband ended up contracting it um, after I had it. So great, great. Well, um, Sheila is asking, how do I know um, Letitia? We've been uh, friends for a number of years. We worked um, politically together in a number of different uh, arenas and um, became really good friends. We started um, working on various campaigns um, nationally together, including Hillary Clinton's, and um, started working um, together on a number of different projects and became very community and politically involved and uh, remain friends. And uh, I got COVID and so did Letitia. <laughs> so we'll um, talk a little bit about that. Hopefully she's able to get back on. I see a number of people popping on, asking questions. Um, I know that she froze for a bit, but hopefully she can um, jump back on. Thanks, Manera. She's letting me know that uh, she's uh, coming back on in just a second. So, um, Coretta, a little bit about myself. Um, I am um, a mother of five. I'm currently vice president at Impact. Great, great. There she is. <laughs> I told them that I didn't like set this platform, but I was supposed to be just talking to you. So, <laughs> you know I mean? so I just answer questions as they showed up in the comments. I just did my best answering questions. And no, that know. was so good. No, that was so good. I'm so sorry. I had to go to my. So anyway, Wi-Fi is crazy. Um, Angelique, are you with me? Just I, am. Like, I don't know. Maybe because everyone's trying to get on tonight. I am on. <laughs> Is she frozen again? Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Manera, can you let Tish know that she's frozen again? I 
I'm texting her, you guys, one more time. And if not, you guys can just ask questions and I can just tell you a little bit about my um, experience and my family's experience with COVID and, um, you know, just answer any questions that you may have during this time. There's so much fear and so much going around about it. Um, but this too shall pass. I can say that. And um, we do have the strength through our faith to get through it. So I hope that that is one of the things that we talk a little bit about and answer questions about um, because it's a, a very scary time, but um, it's definitely a time to lean in and um, have faith and, and let that carry you through. So um, let me text um, Tish and see if uh, she's able to maybe change locations, of course, she is quarantined. So she's going to have to move about in her house to try to get um, her Wi-Fi back up. But um, I can definitely, you know, answer any questions and share with you, you know, my direct experience um, with COVID-19. Thank you, Sheila. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, I see my prayer warrior on the line, Ava Graves. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Thank you. Tish reached out on yesterday and asked me if I would kind of share a little bit about my family's experience with COVID. Um, just a little prior to them closing rodeo, um, I had gone to um, a very you know, intimate dinner, nothing major. One of my best girlfriends, Kim uh, Gagne, you guys probably know her, Kim White and her husband, Emilian, um, is my husband's best friend. And we had gone to their house actually to just have dinner. And it was pretty private, intimate, um, had a little um, dinner. In fact, we had one of our uh, good friends there, you know, cooking dinner. Some of you may know him, Kevin, Kelvin. And um, we had dinner and we left. And that was maybe, I think, on a Thursday. And I sat by Emilian during dinner. Um, in fact, he sat to my right and my husband kind of sat across from the table. And um, I think it may have been four, maybe six of us at the table, but it was pretty big. And in fact, we made it a, a thing not to, to hold hands to say grace. In fact, um, Kim's thing was let's kind of fist pound and we decided to do that and um, you know we you know fist pound and touched elbows and said our grace and had dinner and everything and we sat around the table and just talked about what this um, pandemic was actually going to mean for the economy things were just breaking out and becoming a real issue because they had just decided to close the rodeo uh, in fact, both of our families were supposed to go to rodeo together. So um, imagine going out there and having one of us infected and how many people could have been impacted by that um, circumstance or situation. Um, so uh, maybe I think Tuesday, um, Kim called us. My daughter had had a severe headache on Monday. She also was at Kim's house, but the kid, kids were upstairs um, and the adults were kind of at the table. Um, and she called and said, hey, uh, I'm I'm concerned. I'm going to take a million to get checked out. He's hot. You know, I don't think he's feeling well or what have you. But no signs, no issues during dinner or anything like that. In fact, um, he just told her he just felt a little tired and we were kind of blowing off my daughter's headache the same way. Um, that was on Tuesday. Um, on Wednesday, I got up to work and do what I do uh, from home. I work with Impact Strategic Consulting and we're an emergency management firm. So uh, COVID-19 is something that we're responding to uh, as much as possible through our experience with FEMA and HHS. Uh, a lot of that is corresponding or correlating uh, right now. So uh, it's it's allowed us as a firm to really be able to support um, 
various entities um, in the public sector and even the private sector if they're looking for some support. There you are. I don't know what's going on, but we got to get this going because I'm thinking that, like, I don't know what's going on. Okay. So, guys, yeah. this is why we're doing this is because Angelique and I both have had, or well, I still have, um, this whole crazy COVID situation. And, um, and, um, I call her because I just didn't understand what I was experiencing and almost really kind of from a spiritual perspective, um, just because you're by your in every in every way of your brain working, like when you're really sick, you think that your loved ones can be with you and um, next to you, your family checks on you. Um you're able to, you know, interact with people that obviously you care about and yeah. all that's gone. All that's gone when you have COVID because yep. people aren't with you because they love you and, um, and they can't be close to you. So they leave things on your literally on like all those commercials you see on television about people waving to the door and leaving things on doorsteps. Like it's very real, but it's very different when, when you're like going through it because it's like this, um, the sense of complete loneliness at the same time, you know, people out there praying for you because you see it on social media and you see it going on. And so Angelique, I thought I was going crazy and I called Angelique and I said, Angelique, I don't know if I'm like losing it. I said, but are you like really lonely? And like, are you experiencing something almost from a spiritual perspective um, just in terms of, how you're able to tolerate and deal with this. And this is what Angelique told me. So Andrew, tell me what your answer was when I called you that day and I told you that. I think I started crying. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, to be honest, I think, uh, you know, I, I teared up because there is definitely an experience um, that you have coming out of this. And um, I don't know any other way to say it other than, you know, you know, you recognize that life is different and there is a another, you know, aspect that you've got to begin to pay attention to. And um, you recognize God's grace and his love on your life because the whole world is impacted by something that you've been impacted by. So um, I told you, yes, it was a, a a very different experience. And, um, you know, I know that <laughs> literally I, I was different. Yeah. And like, I remember, you know, I talking, but the one thing that I had to do every day is I had to write down things I was grateful for. So I didn't, I know you journaled, right. I, wrote, I started writing down. You yeah. Say. Yeah. So I was <laughs> Yeah. So let me tell you one really cool pivotal moment. I had a good friend of mine um, got someone on the phone for me. He just called me. He's like, I didn't know what to give you. I know you probably have a thousand things come in and all that. And he said, I just want someone to talk some good stuff into you. And so I got on the phone and he was like, it's no one serious. Don't know. No one major. Just listen to what he has to say. And so um, I, so he got the person on the phone and this guy was speaking life into me, just like, you know, you're a powerful, yeah. you are, you know, you're creative, like, don't let this stop you. You know, all these really good things he said to me and girl, it was Les Brown, like the Les Brown. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know? And one thing he said to me was, that I'll never forget. He said, turn off your television because it's too negative. Don't answer the phone anymore for anyone that isn't speaking goodness and positive and love mm -hmm. inside mm -hmm. you, right? Mm -hmm. um, do all the things that you wanted to do to get better, to heal from the inside. Because one thing about this virus, you guys, is it just takes everything out of you. Totally. Totally. Like, you're, you're drained completely. Yes. It just sucks every, like you can't, like I literally could go from my couch to my bed and that was all I could do. Mm -hmm. Getting up and going to the restroom and coming back to the bed, you're, you're collapsing. I mean, you're exhausted. I, I remember one of the um, periods that I had or times that I had, you know, gone to the restroom and I was coming back and I felt so weak that I was thinking to myself, hey, this has got to pass. This has got to be something. I mean, number one, you really recognize why you can't 
you know, do anything and why people get it and they sit there because you're so weak. People say, well, the minute you get the symptoms, start doing something. You're so sick and so tired that you're trying to just lay there and rest. And I think that one of the most difficult things was to make myself eat, to force yes. myself to drink water. Water. I mean, literally, yeah. my family was leaving like, things outside the door. And, you know, I would try to get up and go get them. They were knocking on the door saying, Mom, you know, my husband was coming to the door. Babe, your food is out here. Your stuff is out. I mean, I, I just wanted to lay there. Yeah, yeah, and so and so that that you know that for day four for me, so I journal like kind of like wrote down every day, right? So for mm-hmm. for me, for me, um, for me, I think it was day four when I knew if I didn't get out of the bed, I was gonna die because I had to had water in three days. I think that that's why it, 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 it that's why it progresses so fast because right. it takes you down so fast. Yes. I mean, literally one day, Wednesday, I, you know, was sick, didn't feel good. I came upstairs, kept trying to do my work. My son looked at me. That was maybe 11 o'clock that I could tell that I wasn't feeling, you know, quite myself. Mm-hmm. And I went downstairs to grab you know, one of my little jackets Mm -hmm. to work in the house and the house is not freezing cold. Mm -hmm. So I put on a jacket to finish my work. That was maybe 11 o'clock. I got off of a call by three o'clock. I was leaning over and my son said, mom, you look horrible. What is wrong with you? And by that night they were taking my temperature. I was at 102.9. I mean, it, it was crazy. You had temperatures. I didn't ever have temperature. I had the body sweats. So I never had a temperature the whole entire time. But my body, my body was just sweating to where I had to change clothes over and over. And over. I mean, at one point, I literally just laid there in wet clothes for like, I think, two days. Mm-hmm. And I was so weak. I couldn't even tell my kids how sick I was. The, the you don't want to scare them. For yes, sure. yes. I mean, for me as a mom, it was I, I don't want I didn't say how sick I was. And women, we are so used to like dealing with a headache. You know, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to work and just had a headache or how many times I've still done what I had to do with a headache. So mine started with a headache. So I ignored it, you know, like, okay, I'll just take something later, made some tea and did my normal thing, thinking it will pass or what have you. And I did not want to scare my kids because of what was already in the news. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to get, you know, tell my husband necessarily. I was like, "Ah, I'm not feeling so hot or whatever. But when my son, my college kid looked at me and said, hey, you're you're not right. Something you we are going to the emergency room. Yeah, something was up. So what day was that when you went to did you did you finally go to the emergency? Yeah, we went to the ER. Um, I think that was like that the 20. Let's look at the calendar because I I think we had dinner like the the 19th. That may have been like the 21st, the 22nd um, that I uh, ended up going to the emergency room. Okay, so no. Yeah, it was the the 25th, the 25th. Was that for you? Then? Wednesday. No, no, like how many days in were you? Um, I got the the fever that day. Oh, oh, oh so you went I, that okay. I, so I the, the next morning I was in the ER at the twenty sixth. Oh my god! Okay, so Angela, I laid in bed for three days. Yeah, vomiting. because remember, I didn't know, I didn't know vomiting, diarrhea, and nausea were symptoms. So for the first about day and a half, I thought that I just ate something bad. Well, we went to the ER and I wanted to take my head off and the vomiting started that then. Oh, it did? Okay. So okay. I, I, I mean, when I got a temperature past 102, Brian, I mean, my kids were like losing it. And my daughter was like, oh my God, I want to take my head off. And we went to the emergency room. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I didn't have, I I didn't, I just laid in bed and I knew, I knew by like day four, I knew if I didn't get up and go to the hospital and get some fluids, I was mm-hmm. going to die of dehydration and every organ was probably going to shut down Yeah, because 
because I knew that I had not had any water. And my, my dad was bringing me like Pedialyte and stuff like that, but I couldn't take everything I put in my mouth. I, I wanted just to throw up. It was just. But think of how blessed you are that you had family to bring those things. I constantly am thanking God daily that I had my family to supply those things. Imagine families or women that right. are out there with nobody that are single moms and it's only babies at home or they're at their place alone. Somebody right. was knocking on my door saying, please drink water, please right. eat something. I had to peel myself out of the bed and say, okay, let me do what they're asking me to do. Right. It was a reminder to take care of yourself because you're in such a bad place. You don't feel like you can do anything. You're turning everything over. Oh my God. I'm telling you, it is the most, it is the most vulnerable place yeah. I think I've ever, I've ever experienced in my entire life. And I, uh, it's just that pain of my body. I just will never, I'll never forget it. It was just, I told my daughter, when you bring up the pain, I literally told my daughter uh, in college, this is what it feels like to be in full-blown labor. Labor, yeah. I thought I'm telling you, you right now, my back hurts so bad. Yeah. Oh, my God. That I, that, that I, I mean, I literally thought that my, I mean, I, I had, it's it's worse than probably back surgery. It, it felt like I was in full labor, giving birth with nothing. Nothing that, exactly. Exactly. Like the the back pain is floor. enormous. I couldn't get comfortable. Like I went from the floor to the bed. And then finally I woke up in one morning and I was on the floor because yeah. I did not know any other thing to do. I had taken what I'd taken way too much Tylenol three. Yes. Um, I did too. I think that I did too. I think that I um you get to the point you're in so much pain and you know the meds and everything are there and you're just trying to balance the pain. But I kept saying, I can't go to the hospital. I can't go to the hospital. I can't get put in the hospital. Then I'm going to be away from my kids. So I tried to do everything in my bedroom that I could do myself right. to take care of myself because I actually feared going to the hospital. So yeah. imagine someone who's, you know, going through this experience, trying to manage that and not sure, you know, what to do and and over or under medicating. Right. It's, right. It's, yes. Because you're afraid of the hospital. So speaking you know? of medication, so these are all my medicines, y'all. I'm going to show you all my medicine. These are my medications. These are all my medicines that were given to me. Um, and that's and that's not like any of the vitamins. And the other part, so this, this brings us into medications, guys. So you have to kind of figure out what's best for you because everybody, there's a cocktail that they give you. And I love Dr. Gath. He was, he's been amazing. I've had two doctors, Dr. Gath and Dr. Johnson have been caring for me. Um, but you have to literally, you have to literally make sure that what you're taking is best for you personally. Mm -hmm. So I have a history of blood clots. So let's talk about our scariest night, Angelique. So my scariest night was when my body was so hurting so badly. My doctor had given me all my medications. Everyone is everyone is hearing about you know hydro um, hydroxychloroquine. Everyone hears like that's like the drug, but because of one of the biggest side effects of that medication and COVID are blood clots. And so yes. I literally did not sleep one night because I was so scared. I was going to throw a clock. Totally. I put my like my compression heights on from like some random surgery I had. And I was sleeping like upright in my bed. I was yes. so scared. I'm yes. like, dead in my room from a thrown blood clot. Mm -hmm. I took like, I don't know how much aspirin I took that night. Right. Sure. I would make it through the night until I could get my doctor back on the phone to tell him to give me something. He prescribed Zeralto for me. But it's like, what was your scariest night that you remember? That's so crazy. I mean, I think you and I talked about that. Um, our friend Emilian was in the hospital and um, Brian had been doing a lot of research about, you know, s s sleeping upright so that you can breathe and, you know, having um, breath. I had gotten the shortness of breath and I've had a um, pre-existing kind of heart condition with, um, um, what is it called, babe? What, do you, what is it? 
reverse angina. Mm -hmm. So I, I was diagnosed with reverse angina. Um, my whole family on my dad's side has had heart trouble and heart issues. And the more you learn about this, you find out about the, um, you know, blood clots, like you said, or stroke. And my mom had a stroke. My dad had a massive heart attack at 47 and passed. So, you know, I laid there um, one night in so much pain that I literally, you know, had to cry and pray myself to sleep and say the 23rd Psalm all night. I mean, I think that I must have said that a million times. And, you know, thinking about it and you know, when I talked to my husband about it, he was just like, why didn't you call me? Why didn't you text me? You are so afraid of making everybody afraid right. that you, number one, they can't come in the room. Right. You're going to make them sick. Right. So you're in the house with your family that you love and ch cherish. Thank God that I was able to be in my home. I know that that's a blessing. There are people in the hospital that their families never get to see them or be with them or, con you know, console them. But I didn't want to make everyone afraid. Mm -hmm. And I laid there and I rocked myself to sleep. Mm -hmm. Oh and I prayed God. and I cried and I prayed and I cried. And as my chest tightened up, you know, I just, you know, kept doing my breaths and deep breaths and praying and taking, you know, my medication, all that I could do. So, I mean, there's not there's not a, a, a rhyme or rhythm and everybody doesn't have the same symptoms. The more I learn about this it affects everyone differently. You know, we yeah, were, even, the two, us, even, the, two we, of us, even the two of us, when we compared our differences, my family, my husband ended up having it, but it was more of, you know, a tightness of chest and he's asymptomatic. I mean, he was able to function. Mm -hmm. um, little did we know they weren't testing children when I uh, initially got COVID. And I know for sure that my son's eyes swelled up and he got pink eye and he, you know, we blew it off as allergy season and you should take this. My daughter laid in the bed sick for two days, just did not want to get up feeling horrible, but she's 12. At that time, they were telling us it did not affect kids. Oh, right. So I'm thinking, take some medication. We're FaceTiming each other right here in the house when honestly, Probably my entire family was COVID positive. Yeah. So, when they get some type of real um, test to mm -hmm. test the antibodies, mm -hmm. I want us fully tested. If something is going on and it's that contagious, mm -hmm. I could not have been here breathing the same air with the ventilation and everything. And my family not eventually get it. We kept so, their distance. So, so let me tell you what I did, Angelique. So when the first COVID first happened, a friend of mine had this, um, and I say ozone machine, but it really isn't ozone. It's mm -hmm. attaches, I think we talked about this, attaches to your AC I, unit. You called me. I, yeah, I called you about that. I swear to God, I think that saved my family because all of my kids, I had five boys in my house, my mm -hmm. three sons and their two friends that got stuck here from California. And I was so worried I would get those kids sick. Because, and then, you know, and their families were trusting me which was terrifying, Absolutely. but I purposely wasn't seeing my parents because I was doing all that pop-up kitchen stuff. And I just knew I was around people and in public and stuff. Right. 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 I purposely hadn't seen them. So I knew I hadn't seen them. And of course I haven't worked, but I believe that that ozone unit that I put on my air conditioning, mm -hmm. system, I honestly believe it kept our air pure. Well, I already had it by the time you called me to check on oh, me. Yeah. And I was already kind of, you know, I mean, that day I was drained, but I remember you telling me about that. And I, you know, texted it to Brian, but we were already, you know, full blown. The kids had come home. California had shut down. So I had gone to pick up Brazil from the airport. Ania was home. Miles was home from Xavier. So my house was packed. Right. And all I could do was try to avoid, you know, coming in direct contact with everybody that I had really already been in direct contact. They're my kids. Right. So not knowing how long I had probably, you know, had the symptoms or walked around with it, it did not start affecting me until after our, our dinner with uh, Emilia and Kim. Mm -hmm. So so he tested positive and they took him away in a hazmat suit as soon as he got to the hospital. 
So wow. I had been around somebody that had definitely. Been um, had, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. So my, I believe, you know, I was trying to play in my brain, like where I could have gotten this from. I feel like I got it from the grocery store. Mm-hmm. Um, I really do because uh, I had, I was conscious about how often I was going to the grocery store. Um, but, you know, Ramadan had started my yeah. boys were home. I was really cooking multiple meals for them. And so, um, and so I know for sure I was in line at the grocery store. Someone coughed in front of me. I had my mask on. The person in front of me didn't. And I, I said to myself at that moment, I was like, you know what? I'm going to be sick. You know what I mean? I just remember that happening. And of course, I don't know if that was the moment that it did. I just remembered um, that moment um, when I, when that person just coughed in front of me. I mean, it's a really, really scary, um, really scary. It is. It is. It is. is. And 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 fear is playing such a huge part in it, but there are people recovering and there are people getting through this. So I, I hope that, you know, we can represent that you can recover and that you can get through it. And you, you know, life is different. Life is going to be different. Right. Let's answer a couple of questions. Um, Monica was asking about a HIPAA filter system. So I'm going to, Monica, I'm going to post the name of the filter that I got. um, It's in, that was actually placed into my air conditioning unit. Um, uh, And I'll, because I would love for y'all to know about it. I'm actually putting it at my office in, in my Peerland dental office as well, just so I can take care of my, of my team. Um, let me just, I wanted to see, I want to make sure I answer people questions, people's questions, Angel Lake. Someone asked us um, how many guests ended up with positive COVID diagnosis from the dinner party, Angel Lake. Um, I think there were, how many ended up positive, babe? Four from the dinner. And email. From the dinner, three people, but it ended up being seven people impacted. <laughs> so yeah, that shows how contagious it is because yeah. you guys are in a room together, and that's why wearing masks is so important. Oh, and yeah. even though you're wearing, a mask, if someone else doesn't have one on, then really you're vulnerable. Um, uh, and it's so. William asked about vitamin D. Well, I took vitamin D. I did I because did I, I did too. I, I try to get as much sunlight as I can as well. Um, just because I felt like that was important. But once again, guys, I had to go downstairs. So I cleared my house the moment I started feeling on Saturday, I cleared my house. So I've been going through this literally by myself. My family has not been here with me. And, um, and they left, um, they left on the day I found out I was positive. They left on Wednesday of last, like, I think. Mm. so I was so worried that they would get sick that um, I really have been to this by my, you know, completely by myself. But walking up and down the stairs has been something that has just, even that alone, but my friends have been, you know, feeding me and which has been so great. Like I'll wake up in the morning and I'll have my breakfast on my porch, which is so awesome. Like, it's just, that's been the special part about this whole experience. Um, let's see, any other questions? Um I see Sean's asking Angelique, um, mm-hmm. what do you think happened to Angelique? Oh, wait, um, Angelique. Um, oh, so, so Angelique, mm-hmm. she's asking, since only 10 of you were there in mm-hmm. the house and four of you, how many people were in your household? I, I, well, it was uh, myself and Kim and the kids were kind of upstairs because they were starting to come home. So Brazil was starting to come home and Kim's daughter, but at the table downstairs, it may have been um, six of us at the dinner, maybe around the table or something like that. But yeah, yeah. but the, goal, the, the difference in our situations was, I honestly feel like that purifier that I use protect my kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because no one in my family. So my whole staff is tested double negative. My council staff has been double negative and my kids are double negative. And the reason why I bring that up is because I feel like there's a personal responsibility that we have. Um, I, I think that they would have gotten sick if I wasn't doing the right stuff. Like we were all eating dinner together. Like we would do two people having dinner at one time and then the other two would come down and have dinner. Um, just because the social distancing within the household I felt was important too. Um, 
But I don't know how you guys, how do y'all manage your, like your family life, Angel? Like I feel like I haven't seen my kids ever since this pandemic. Absolutely. That's crazy that you say that because my day seven was probably one of my hardest. And in my journal, I just want to share it. It says the days have been long and the nights have been even longer. It's been a week since I've touched my kids and my family members. And I wrote that in my journal and I said, but I have got to wake up this morning and start over. So, you know, that that's how mentally and emotionally you are, you know, trying to, trying to get through this process. And like Brian said, I was isolated in the room, you know, looking out the same window every day. And um, we just really practice as much as possible, the social distancing that we could. We got um, the family members mask. All of the kids were wearing masks around the house. Everybody did separate into their individual rooms. Remember that they are still online. They're in college, so they had classes to do and everything. So we just separated as much as possible. Of course, we had hand sanitizers at every door. We had, Brian had, you know, the Lysol wipes and disinfectants at every door. If you open the door, he, he put the wipes there for us to open the door with the wipes. Right. So we were getting, you know, doing things like that. And as I was getting my um, uh, quarantine test from Fort Bend County uh, done, they agreed at that point to test my husband. But they did not test the entire family um, with the kids and everything. So they tested Brian and he came back positive, but he was functioning. He was asymptomatic, as Coretta Brown is asking. Yeah, yeah. He was, you know, in that mode. Thank God he was wearing a mask the entire time. Mm -hmm. And we just agreed to keep the family as quarantined as possible. We ordered when we could groceries or we tried to get food delivered and have them drop it off at the back door or the porch or what have you. Mm -hmm. But that was a very long 21 day process plus process because they didn't come out on my immediate 14th day to test. So people have to recognize that You know, when they ask you to quarantine, it's until you can be tested again and get a get a negative. Yeah. And get the result, which is also delayed. So it's much longer than a 14 day cycle. My daughter, got her. my daughter tested positive with me and she got her second negative test letter back day before yesterday. I got mine a month later. This is yeah, April 15th. It took over a month to get my second negative um, test result. And that is when you're really legal. I mean, I don't know if it's legal or not, but that's when the county says you can, you know, go, go back, back out. The world again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I went a little bit of a different direction um, only because of the level of guilt that I had. Um, in terms of just the idea that I could give this to my family and my team at the city. Oh, yeah. And my volunteer, uh, just the idea of it. So I I made arrangements with River Oaks Hospital and um, and got everyone tested. I think at the end, I think we had gotten like about 20 people tested total. All of my pop-up volunteers, all of my city of Houston people, all of my staff in my office, um, and my entire family. Um, and I just made that sacrifice. Um, because we needed results back within two or three days. And I needed to know that they were safe because the level of guilt that I experienced thinking for one minute, I got them sick and then they got their family sick. Absolutely. But I, could not, I could not, that that probably kept me up more at night. Than mm-hmm. Well, my, my test was early on and Texas was not testing like that. So you had to have the symptoms. Remember this was right prior to rodeo, time when I actually, when, when we were beginning the shutdown at that time, the rules were different. This thing has been so fluid and they've been opening up testing sites as you go. But at that time, unless you were, you know, experiencing strong symptoms, in fact, you were feeling, filling out the information online to determine if you could be tested. They would not test the rest of them. So I had to be as cautious as possible and diligent as possible. And my husband just went into 
management mode. He just right. went into, you know, PPE mode. He was collecting masks and getting the kids, right. you know, wipes and um, doing what we could as a family to try to avoid getting everyone sick. One of my biggest fears was, oh my God, what if I give this to my husband? Who right. is also, I don't know that people know, but he's diabetic. Yeah. So he falls in that category right, right. of what they say, pre-existing conditions. Thank God he works out and he tries to be healthy, but he's walking around asymptomatic, predisposed. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, the moment I found out I was positive, I told everyone in my group that you, the question number two on the River Oaks is, you know, screen, you know, screening process is, have you come in contact with anyone positive? And then that just opened the floodgates for us. And so um, I just had to get, I mean, I just, I, it was, it was mandatory mm -hmm. that, that in the moment I called Rob, who owns, who's, you know, owner of the hospital and just so blessed to even have met him in this whole process, you know, um, and he just really took care of my family. So I'm just so grateful, but let's just talk about, and I know we're kind of pushing on time here, Angelique, but let's just talk a little bit about, um, so what's next for me? I get a blood test. I was supposed to get a blood test on Tuesday. I couldn't go because I feel like I had a pinched nerve. And I think it's just because I was sleeping on my side for so long. So um, I'm going to go tomorrow and get my blood test done. They still aren't going to test me for COVID, though, until probably Monday. And then after that, I still have to wait for those results to come back. And then I have to wait for another negative. So what I really right. want to understand exactly. is 30 day stint if you're good. So what I really wanted to let people know is there's a planning process, I believe, that should happen here. Um, I think you should. I feel at some point, because the city's about to open up again, I do believe. Yes. Everyone's going to be touched a little bit more probably than the other person. You know, I think everyone's going to get it at some point. Please um, don't get relaxed about, don't get relaxed about that. Really Absolutely. Good. About and reopening. Please, don't become yeah. relaxed. Yeah. And plan it out. So I would just advise anyone. Um, I would say, listen, you know, care for yourself now. So like start taking your vitamins, really boost your immune system. Um, really just do so a lot of self-care. Work out if you can. Just do whatever you can from a self-care perspective. Um and then be observant about kind of what you're surrounding. It, it spells like COVID, guys, if you haven't figured this out. But be observant about what's around you. So where are your surroundings? When you go to the grocery store, if you have gloves on, even if you have gloves on, guys, if you still touch your car door, then you've now cross-contaminated at the grocery store what you have on your car door. So be conscious that even if you have gloves on, if you, it, it still works the same as your hands. So. Mm -hmm. Just don't want to cross contaminate. Um, be vigilant about how you walk in your life. So look at all of your expenses. Like I went through before COVID really officially happened. I went through and, and literally canceled every single membership, every single thing of mine that I knew I couldn't afford at that moment in time. Because I knew that my practice was probably going to be shutting down and dollars matter to me. Right. And so I was to be vigilant about everything, about loving your children, about. Let me say that again. I mean, and love please, please yeah. definitely be aware, you guys. I, I, I don't want to cut you off, Tish, but, you know, they're talking about um, children being impacted um, and it affects everyone so differently. And I think that you really have to keep your children safe as well. Um, it is an epidemic and I do believe that a pandemic that will, I think ultimately spread, like you said, to everyone at some point, at some phase, but be diligent with your children when you're taking them out. Make sure that they're washing their hands just as you should be. If they have on a mask, if you have on a mask, try to have your kids face covered as well. Even though they're saying young people are not affected by that, a lot of that has changed and it's fluid information that's changing daily. So please be conscious about um, your entire family and other people's family. Well, you're not right. just, yeah, you're not just protecting yourself. Um, you want to look out for others, um, you know, in this process and, and not become relaxed. I don't think that things will be the same. I no. know that they won't. I know that they won't. And, and it's an adjustment. 
And then the sharing of information, just try to reach out as much as you can, guys, and get as much real information as possible. Um, that's kind of one reason why we're doing this, this whole conversation is just to give you guys real stuff um, that we're experiencing um, every every day. And the last thing is D, and that's digging in. So when, you're, so when I got sick, the level of fear that I experienced the level of anxiety, the level of loneliness, the level of um, uncertainty of what this can happen. Like it really made me dig really deep in terms of if I died to like, to die, if I died today, like, did I do the work? Like, did I do everything I possibly could just to make sure that I contributed to society in the way in which my parents wanted me to, right? Like you, you have like those moments of check-in, like real on check-in. And I feel like in the exact world, we're not going to be the same because like, I have got to be a really good person. Mm -hmm. Because God gave us another chance. Like he kept us out of the hospital. He didn't, I mean, we were probably one of some of the lucky ones in this whole process. And that's why life is different in my opinion. Totally. I think that life is different because you recognize grace. You actually realize that it's not merited you haven't earned it there's nothing that you're doing that's greater than anyone else yeah. that's passed away from this thing people are going to work and doing what they do every day and contributing and they're passing away as well so you recognize and identify um grace first of all mm -hmm. and you recognize that you, you can't take things for granted Mm -hmm. You can't take, I mean, we were fully operating, doing everything. And this is not something that's just impacted the U.S. This is global. Mm -hmm. And the impact of this global pandemic has changed how everyone sees everything. And you recognize how, how truly bad, you've got to have faith. You've got to trust in something. You've got to look at something much bigger than you, you know, and what you've been doing every day. <laughs> and, and the fact that it lingers and lingers, it's almost like a constant um, reminder mm -hmm. of what you're, you know, you're dealing with, I, you know, and I think that a lot of people may say, oh, you know, once you go through something really bad, you just get prayed up and you ask for prayer and you pray while the thing is happening. This is a little bit different in my opinion, because your family also isn't with you. So it's not the fact that you're just feeling isolated, but your kids also have a different perspective perspective of totally how you are in their lives. Totally. You know what I'm saying? And so yeah. it's, it's just a lot more than our experience. Absolutely. My oldest son, Sharif, I don't think that he really believed it was real. And he called me yesterday and he's like, mom, are you really still sick? I'm like, yeah, babe, I can't go anywhere right now. Like I'm really feeling sick still. He goes, absolutely are you kidding me. Like they don't understand. So now he's realizing this is very, very real and I can't be with you. Right. Right. Well, it, it affected my children differently as well. Miles went into, you know, doctor mode, making teas and reading and, you mm -hmm. know, you know, hey, mom, make sure you're taking vitamins, make sure you're doing this and doing that or what have you. Well, about three to five days into it, Nigel was just standing at the door saying, are you there? Can you say prayers with me? What are you doing? I mean, what are you doing, mom? And I could feel the sadness. Right. So this this thing that you see people touching through a glass and all of that, it's very real. But the emotional detachment and our, you know, having to text, we've already become a texting society. This is only going to enhance that. So you've got to have a real relationship with your family. You've got to have real tangible relationships with people like you and I as girlfriends or as friends, because everything is moving to a virtual space. So you got to be really genuine in your connection to people. And they've got to know that you really care about them because everything is going to be virtual. I said to my girlfriend, I don't think it affects my younger kids the way that it might affect us or our young older kids because they're used to putting oh, what they have to say on right. text or FaceTiming. 
it's going to be a long road before anybody remembers shaking hands. Right. That's right. And my love, in our society. Right. And my, and also, you know, I, cause we're bored, right. I did my love language, go figure, but my love language is, t- I know, just laugh at me. It's okay. I was bored and I was probably trying every ding app that was, that was available to me. But I did. My love language is touch. It's a little, don't laugh at me. Be quiet. That, that's you know we laugh at each other, but that. So so my love one was was like touch, and I have not had a hug in like almost fifteen days. Like no one has like touched me or hugged me, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And someone that drives and thrives off of that and needs that every day for like their daily. My like, youngest, my youngest is like that, but my middle daughter doesn't need that affection. She only wants to communicate. She's right. really busy with her stuff and everything is very formal. Hey mom, are you doing what you're supposed to do? Check it out. But my son, my youngest is like, his teacher could tell online something was wrong. She texted my husband to ask, is Nigel okay? He's not really present during our online class and he's whining. His math teacher recognized his whining. So my husband went ahead and disclosed, hey, my wife has COVID-19. So Nigel's into his sixth or seventh day of not talking to her or missing her right. and everything. And it was quite emotional for him. Whereas my other daughter, they just wanted me to take care of myself and manage it. Right. You know? And that's, so. where, that's another piece just of advice is, you know, is to know what, how everyone's love, I'm just using language, language, but how everyone's love, love in the household, right? Because Harrison hasn't slept for three days. So he called me, he's on my parents and he's not sleeping. So I told my dad, I was like, right. dad, you're really, really worried about me. But that was Ryan. Right, right, right. So I, we got some like melatonin gummies just so I didn't want him to get sick, but he's, he's a boy, a young man, right? And so he's not mm-hmm. going to tell me that he's losing sleep because mm-hmm. he's worried about other, but I'm by myself at home. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. People really know what's going on and the uncertainty of what's going on and the fact that I haven't bounced back. You know, we're kind of superheroes in our kids' minds. Yeah. And a lot of you out there that are watching absolutely and they aren't used to me being sick. Right. I don't I don't get sick. So when I got a temperature of 102 point whatever it was, we knew something was wrong. Cause I, I mean, I've got five kids, so I've probably built up a resistance to everything. So when I got sick, it was a really big deal. It affected everybody in my house. I mean, everybody lost weight while I was sick. Everybody, you know, they were eating less and less and, you know, we were trying to drink water, but everybody in my house lost weight the entire time I was sick. It was, it was crazy. Yeah, this is not a very good way to lose weight. I mean, and, and the and the and not only losing weight, Angelique, it's the um, it's the tone, is the loss of tone. Because remember, guys, you can't walk more than like ten steps. Absolutely, so my bed, my bed is about five, about ten steps for my chase. Anything I, more than that is like a deep, like labored breath. And so your body becomes really flaccid kind of in a way in terms of muscle tone. Absolutely. You do anything. Well, and you so- know that I do yoga and everybody knows. Who yeah. knows who know. And I thought, OK, maybe if I could just do that. Tish, it was everything I could do to bend down or even try to touch my toes or anything. I called my girlfriend, Nettie, literally crying one Saturday morning because I was so used to just like getting up and having energy and working out or whatever. I literally called her and said, look, I I just cannot believe this is how, and she had to talk to me and say, Hey, take it easy. Take it easy. You you know, you're used to getting up and exercising Mm -hmm. and getting back healthy right away. This is something no one has ever experienced. Stop being hard on yourself about that. And there are people that are truly struggling with the day to day life and moving back into, you know, what they're what they're used to. And they will, will will not have any support. So and, you know, yeah, let me, and let me just add this, Angelique. People have to also remember that this is—we're not talking about guys day two and four. 
We're talking about this is experience in day 14, 15. I was like, about to say, this, this is what I thought I was over. over. Yes. Since you don't have a fever or you think right. since you don't have a cough or your back is not hurting or right. your head's not hurting, you should go back to trying to do normal things, which no. is also a problem. You have none of that energy, no. you have none of those abilities going up downstairs. Your body is not the same. Yeah. You're tired. Yeah. I'm doing like two. I'm like doing, I can go up and down probably twice a day and I'm full on winded when I get at the top of the stairs. Full and winded. I, yeah. Fully full winded, fully, fully, fully winded. But this goes back to people, Angelique, that, um, what are we going to do about jobs and about how when you're, you call your boss and say, I can't come back to work. And your boss is like, but you're, you're, you're testing negative. And it doesn't matter because your energy still isn't there. Like we're going to have to have protections and I don't want to get political in this conversation, but we're going to have to have protections for employees. Absolutely. I know right now, if I tested negative tomorrow and my energy level was as low as it is right now, I could maybe get through three patients and I'd have a break. Well, we're really blessed because we understand that process and impact is put in place, you know, a, a continuity of operations for our emergency team. And there things will be different. Just like when you go to the grocery store before you can enter our office, you've got hand sanitizers there. Yeah. You're, you're going to have to deal with the possibility of spreading that. But people have to work people and it's going to be responsible and to take responsibility. Okay, Angelique, we're over our hour. Um, yeah. Is there anything that you wanted to mention? Is there anything else? Um, if you could just like describe the whole experience in one statement, how would you, what would you, how would you describe it? And just, I know it's a lot, but like in one ending statement, like how would you describe this? Um, be prepared and accept change um ex ex accept where you are at this point in life and make the adjustments that you are able to make recognize what is not in your hands to control but manage your time during this period manage your mind um and get creative because the world is evolving and changing and it will not be the same even outdoors and the environment is different. So be prepared for mm -hmm. what what God is doing in your life to reveal the new you. Because mm -hmm. there is a new you. There is a new world coming out of this. And if we can all get prepared for that, God is giving us an opportunity to sit back and prepare. Whether you got COVID or not, whether you, you know, are concerned about exposure or not, you've been quarantined and you've been given time, time to figure yeah. some things out. What is it that you're here to do in this world better than you did before? Yeah, no. So, so well done. So well done. So mine is, if you could imagine the, um, the stories that people talk about when you, when your soul hovers, and your your soul has risen, right? Uh, and you're yes. hovering, and you see all of the things below you, right? You see your friends, your family, your loved ones, your work, all the flowers that people are sending you. Absolutely, um, all of that. But you you're like hovering, but you can't touch them or say anything to them, right? The mistakes maybe that you've made, the things that you maybe could have done differently, like all of that happens when your soul is kind of hovering over or over you and everyone's watching, right? That is the experience to me. The beautiful thing about it is my soul isn't hovering. Like I literally get to make all those differences and changes in my world that I want to do better in terms of who I am as a person. Like I get to make those changes now. And I think that's really important because I don't know how many times you can really say that that's happened to you, but I know the work I need to do now more clearly than it was before. I'm so grateful for my friends and my family. And I, I love my kids more now. I love my parents more now. I love my friends. Relationships are everything. Like me and my best friend, Chrissy, have a, we don't talk all the time. And now we talk every day. And I tell her, I was like, seriously, I had to have COVID for us to talk every day. Because those moments now are so, so special, right? 
connect with the relationships that yes. have, have, you know, reconnect with people during this time. And like you said, fall in love with those around you again and yes. fall in love with yourself and life and, and take it all in. Um, yes. because, I mean, this too shall pass. I mean, it's not the first pandemic we've experienced you know, as a, as a nation, as a country and good things do come out of, you know, very difficult situations. Right. 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 Well, listen, I love you and I'm so glad you did this with me. <laughs> I can't believe that we did this together with our hair. Look, <laughs> I know this is the COVID bud. Um, but thank you everyone for watching guys. My godmother told me um, on the phone, she said, everything that you do is important but you are vital. And wow. I will never forget that. Wow. So I'm telling everyone that's watching, all that you do is very important to the people, but your existence in this world is vital. It is. And I need all of you. We need all of you. Your families need all of you. So just be safe. Take care of each other. We love you so, so, so much. I hope this helped. I I hope it helped. I hope it just made some sense to all to everyone. And um, if you have any questions, obviously you'll know how to reach me. I'm trying to get back in the world again. Um, and I'll be talking to my doctor. I'm not sure when we're going to do this again, but my doctor is going to get on with me and talk about treatments and why it's important and how treatments awesome. are. Treated. That's awesome. Hug your families, you guys. Yes. I mean, hug yes. your kids. If if you know, definitely keep that um, very special and sacred. It's yes. actually sacred now. I mean, a hug is sacred. So when you hug somebody and you have, you know, that around, just recognize how truly sacred it is. It is. All right. Well, I love you, Angelique. Thanks for doing this with me. Thank you. And you take care. I appreciate you for inviting me. No, of course. Of course. Thank of course. you for calling and asking. Who would have known, right? Who would have known? This is the second, the second crazy phone call. The last one was like, what, seven, 10 years ago? I when I I think so. Someone asked how we met and I was trying to recall all of that and everything. And I was just like, you know what? I, I think that we saw each other and Tish called and, you know, just like you called yesterday. Hey, I'm, I'm going to do this live. You know, it's just like, all right. <laughs> all right, babe. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Everyone. I love you guys. Well, um, I'm going to share that um, that ozone unit thing majigum on Facebook. So you can also send a picture too, so y'all can know what it is. And, um, and any other questions, um, any other questions you may have for me, um, but guys live big, live big and whatever that looks like. I don't know how that looks and not big relative, like live big and um, I big and give big. Yes, give yes. All day, all day. I love you all so, so much. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Tish. Thank you, Angelique.